Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Daniel Nelson. He is senior nutritionist at Zoetis. Daniel, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. We know that gut health is very important to the success of a pig herd. Uh, for years, um, producers have been using medications to manage bacteria that can cause all sorts of enteric diseases. But there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. And tell us about that. How do you distinguish between the good and the bad and maybe the ugly? Well, I don't know if it's a matter of uh, distinguishing uh, between the two of them, but we, science has told us that there's a, within the normal microflora, there are good and bad bacteria, and the good bacteria help to keep the bad bacteria in check. So you've got all these bacteria in the gut. You've got good bacteria, bad bacteria. Is it important to maintain a balance between the two, or doesn't it matter? It does matter. We want to make sure that we have sufficient amount of good bacteria to keep the bad bacteria in check. The end products of metabolism of these bacteria that normally reside in the gastrointestinal tract are not always good and can exert some deleterious or bad effects on the host. So we want to keep those bad bacteria in check. And you're a nutritionist, not yes. a veterinarian, so how do bacteria affect feed conversion and growth rate and or just the overall utilization of the feed? Let me give you a little background just to uh, drive home the point how important that in intestinal uh, bacteria are. It's been estimated that the uh, human body or the pig body contains about uh, 10 trillion animal cells while the bacterial gut contains over a hundred trillion bacterial cells. So that's 10 times more bacterial cells that the animal is nurturing on an everyday basis uh, than their own cells. And you can imagine from that 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 uh, requires energy which those bacteria consume from the food that the host produce, er, consumes. So, you know, people talk about pigs hosting bacteria. It almost seems like it's the other way around. That's true the uh, bacteria can have a, a significant effect on, on the host, uh, not only by their end products of metabolism, which are not always good, as I said, but new research has even shown that bacteria can produce catecholamines, which can uh, be absorbed by the host and make the host feel anxious during certain times. And what are catecholamines? Catecholamines uh, like epinephrine, norepinephrine, that we typically think of, of flight or fight syndrome hormones that, that puts the host in a state uh, uh, to defend themselves, but it makes the host feel anxious. Now we know that bacteria can produce those compounds and make the host feel anxious. Now I mentioned earlier that for years um, producers and veterinarians have depended on medicated feed additives or antibiotics to manage these bacteria effectively. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on the industry right now to reduce or in some cases even eliminate yes. antibiotics. What's your take on that from a nutritional perspective? There is uh, ever increasing oversight and just this year, uh, January 1st, the new VFD or Veterinary Feed Directive regulations went into effect which now states that any type of uh, antibiotic that's medically important to humans uh, can only be used in pig feed if it has a veterinary feed directive, which is a signed uh, paper from the veterinarian uh, that says that that particular medicated medication is appropriate for the pigs. And so as we move forward, I think this uh, increased oversight will increase. And because of that reason, people are searching for alternatives to antibiotics, such as probiotics, prebiotics, nutraceuticals, plant extracts, and oils that won't be regulated and may have a positive effect on the pig without using antibiotics. And certainly that would be a benefit. Mm -hmm. Now you say may have a positive effect. How well researched are these products? Well, there's been a significant amount of research, but I, in my opinion, we never see the research that didn't work. We only see the research that did work. And so my opinion is that it's not consistent. Antibiotics in the feed give a consistent result every time where these other compounds are inconsistent. So from a practical standpoint, I mean, how does that affect the management of a, a 
hog operation and specifically things like feed conversion and growth rate? Well, from a practical standpoint, of course, if you uh, put something in your feed and hope it's going to work and it doesn't, then we have to come in with step number two, which is, is not uh, uh, the first option, of course, and not always what the producer wants. But if we could find one of these compounds that would improve average daily gain and improve feed conversion, thereby reducing the amount of feed that's needed to produce a pound of gain in a pig, that has some significant economic impacts to the producer. Are there any out there that you think have good potential? At the present time, I would say no. Nothing that I would make a recommendation for for a producer today that works on a consistent basis. If antibiotics are more dependable and, you know, there's, there's pressure from the government, you know, with more paperwork involved to use a medically important antibiotics, uh, consumers have said that they would rather not see the antibiotics in there. But I, I guess not all antibiotics are the same and not all are medically important, is that right? That's true. Not all antibiotics are the same. They work by different mode of actions. Generally, there are two different mode of actions that antibiotics work. Number one, by uh, interfering with protein synthesis in the bacterial cell, thereby shutting down growth and the bacteria ultimately dies. Or number two, affecting cell wall formation of bacteria. So two different mode of actions that uh, compounds work. What are some of the antibiotics that do not require a VFD? So the antibiotics that currently don't require a VFD that are not medically important to humans would include uh, BMD, bacitracin methylene disalicylate, uh, bambermyosins, and also the ionophores uh, in, in chiaxidiostats will not require VFDs. Now, I know these types of antibiotics are often referred to as growth promotants, but when you look on the product labels, it doesn't say growth promotion, it says improved feed conversion, increased rate of growth. How is it that I antibiotics in improve the performance of an animal? Is there some direct effect between the antibiotic and, and the ability for the animal to meet its full genetic potential, or is it just a matter of you know, creating a healthier gut which allows it to absorb nutrients more efficiently? I think there are several ways where antibiotics could positively influence the, the health and the performance of animals. As I said, we understand that the bacterial population in the intestine is huge. If we could reduce by feeding um, medicated feed additives some of the bad bacteria, number one, we could affect uh, their bad end products of metabolism that theoretically could be absorbed into the bloodstream of the host and have a bad effect on the host. Number two, we know that if we can uh, reduce some of those populations of bacteria in the intestine, we increase or we decrease their use of nutrients that the pig is using. And if we can, as you implied, create a healthier gut by reducing some of the bad bacteria, then we have a gut that is more capable of releasing digestive enzymes and more capable of absorbing the nutrients from the feed the pig is consuming. We talked about antibiotics, prebiotics, probiotics, but are there some things nutritionally that producers could take a look at doing to create an even healthier pig through nutrition that would perhaps reduce the need for antibiotics altogether? Well, certainly feeding the correct diet with the correct nutrients for the specific pig at his phase in life is always critical. As I look down the road and look at what science is bringing and what it could bring, uh, probiotics are very hard to establish in the pig. Uh, the pig has its own safeguards for preventing the introduction of, of uh, foreign microbes into its gut, so probiotics are very hard uh, to introduce into pig with success, especially long term. As I look down the road, I think that science needs to concentrate on figuring out the specific food for the bacteria that that bacteria needs to produce. So find the good bacteria in the intestine and pin down the nutrients that that bacteria needs and feed that to the pig, I think is, in my opinion, where we would have some a great success. And one last question. Um, how important is it for a producer's veterinarian 
to be in contact with the producer's nutritionist, or at least their feed company, kind of put their heads together on this? No, oh, I think it's very important. Uh, the vet, nutritionist, and producer interactions, if they're done properly with the correct communication, is a win-win-win uh, situation where all parties are involved working for the success of the producer. We've been talking to Dr. Daniel Nelson. He is Senior Nutritionist at Soetis. Daniel, thanks again.